as promised, we are back. It's me, Purposefully Tasha. This is a series I'm going on with my sister to kind of talk about um, growing up with a mentally ill mother. Um, so that's kind of where we're getting raw and into what we're talking or getting into our lives, getting to know us a little bit deeper, getting to know me a little bit deeper on this channel. So st stay tuned if that's something that you are into. Um, please make sure that you subscribe, hit the button, whichever side it's on, and the bell notification that's next to it so that you don't miss a video. Um, so today, as promised, Tony and I are going to be talking about three negative things that we have learned from growing up with a mentally ill mother. Be sure to follow... Oh, um, be sure to subscribe to Tony and Jess podcast. Um, we have a channel on YouTube. Um, follow me on uh, Snapchat at L A L T O N I, um, and Instagram Tony Love with five E's. Okay, so let's jump right into it. I'm gonna start with the three negative things that I think that I learned from growing up with him into the ill mother. Um. <laughs> I think that sometimes it's easier for me to talk about these things because they're kind of the things that you continuously think about. Um, but one thing that I learned um, from growing up with a mentally ill mother that may be negative was how to cut people off. Um, I kind of really learned from our family dynamics how to cut people off easily because I felt like they weren't going to last anyway. In my life, I've kind of felt like everyone that was supposed to be someone to me left anyway, whether it was physically left or emotionally left, including my mother. Um, I feel like my mom has emotionally left me. As you guys know, I don't have a father and I feel like he left me even though he didn't know me. Um, growing up, Tony's dad was I believe Tony's dad was my dad and he left us. Um, just my grandmother died when I was in sixth grade. She left me. And so I kind of learned that early on that people that I am into and that I am emotionally invested in were going to leave me. So um, I kind of learned to cut people off easy. If you know, if you've ever had beef with me, then you know that I was really good at holding grudges and being able to cut people off. I mean, you could be sitting next to me, like Tony is sitting next to me, and we could have been friends since elementary school, since birth. We could have been born in the same hospital and put in the same nursery, and we could have been best buddies. But as soon as you did something to cross me, it was like you didn't exist to me. And so that is something definitely negative that I learned from growing up um, with a mentally ill mother. And I wouldn't say it's it's because of my mother, I would say it's because of just the environment that I grew up in. It was unstable environment. So with unstable environment comes unstable relationships. So I learned how to cut people off and that kind of spills into relationships, right? Um, because how can you stay in a relationship if every time a confrontation happens, you're ready to cut somebody off? So that's something I think I learned negative one was how to cut people off like quick. Um, number two, one thing I learned is insecurity. I learned insecurity. I would say I learned insecurity from growing up with a mentally ill mother, not necessarily from my mother, but again, from the toxic environment, because all you saw was tox toxicity. Um, my mother being mentally ill, my family not really you know, supporting her. I had people that said negative things to me. I also had some things, people that said positive things to me, but for some reason, it felt like the negative things stuck in my brain more. Um, you grew up without the best clothes and things like everyone else, so you're constantly comparing yourself to people and you don't have, so you say, I'm, you know, I'm not pretty. I am don't have what people have. You, you kind of get used to your life being this way where you're always on defense. And so it's kind of like, maybe I deserve this. So then you start self-sabotaging and putting yourself in predicaments where you're allowing yourself to be treated less than or even attaching yourself to people that 
treat themselves less than so that you guys can kind of have this soul tie where you're doing it together, whether it's an intimate relationship or not. Um, so I think another thing I learned was insecurity and how to like negative self-talk and you know talk myself down like my first two years of college were horrible because I was constantly comparing myself to people you know in college everybody has money to go do this and that well not money but they can go party they can go out to eat they can do this and that I couldn't why because Tasha didn't have mommy and daddy who were just pushing money at her and so I constantly compare myself to them and it, it's really isolating um so if that makes sense insecurity and then another thing I would say I learned from growing up with a mentally ill mother was how to bottle my emotions. And I will say that was from my intimate nucleus family dynamics because whether my siblings saw me as it or not, I saw myself as another parent. And because of that, I felt like I could not show weakness in front of them. And because of that, every time I felt an emotion, I chucked it. I mean, I took it like a shot. I chucked it. It was bitter. I just let it go down and I would just bottle emotions, bottle emotions and bottle emotions. And we all know that like bottling emotions is not really bottling emotions. It's not saying it, but it's definitely going to do something to the inside of you. It's definitely like, um, it's like a volcano. It's like you, you constantly are just feeling some way and you're stuffing it and you're feeling some way and you're stuffing it and you're feeling some way and you're stuffing it and eventually you keep stuffing anything if you stuff it too much it's going to come out and so stuffing myself with these negative emotions it began to come out began to come out in my behaviors I was a academic honor with distinction child okay but as soon as high school rolled around i've been stuffing for years and years and years since about first grade um i was stuffing for years and years and years that by the time high school came around honey i was exploding fighting talking to teachers any type of way just doing dumb stuff and like just the toxicity was coming was spilling out my grades were horrible i mean i my grades were so bad that i became ineligible to play some sports so, and sports were definitely my outlet. So, the last thing I would definitely say I learned was how to bottle my emotions because I felt like, they, first of all, they didn't matter, right? Insecurity. First of all, they didn't, my emotions didn't even matter. So, then I can't show my emotions right now. And then, you know, when I do, when I did try to show my emotions, it literally felt like somebody was grabbing my throat and I just couldn't get the words out. And, th and then when I even thought about saying, I'm like, I'm overreacting. It's not that serious. I would literally talk myself out of my feelings. And although sometimes I may have been overreacting, I still should be able to express how I feel negative or positive in a way that somebody would be able to answer. So the three things I think I learned was bottling my emotions, definitely how to cut people off, and definitely, I forgot the third one. Insecurities. Insecurity. Three negative things. Three negative things. Three negative things. Well, one would be bottling emotions. I noticed that I've developed um, a tendency to not express my feelings at a right point of time. And then later, when I do, <laughs> it's not good. Um, people start to realize, like, what, what are you complaining about? Like... Why are you all the way at 100 when you should be like not there? Um, so battling emotions is something that I've dealt with. Um, I was a child to a mentally ill parent and that resulted in me having to live with strangers, foster care, or having to live with family members, kinship care. And living with each one of those people, I have developed a tendency where I wouldn't express myself because when I did, it was pointless. I had no voice. I felt like I had no voice. So that's where bottling emotions will come up, will come in and will play in to that is that like I couldn't express myself because no one would listen to me. No one would take me seriously. Um, I'm just a bad child 
I'll get into that um, in my third point. But yeah, like I felt like I couldn't express myself. And when I did, there was no help. So that's where bottling emotions come into play. Um, it's just me not being able to express myself when I needed to. Okay, the second one is trauma triggers. Oh my gosh, this is something that I'm still dealing with today. Um, I'll have these triggers because when you live with different people, and it's hard, like, I don't want to say everything in my life, but I'll just say the icing on the cake. I have moved more, more times than you can count on your hands. And I moved, I was the longest person in my siblings. There are four of us, including me. I moved, I was moving ever since I was 10, 18 years old, from 10 to 18, so eight years. And sometimes I will move twice in a year, you know what I mean? And moving, and then not only moving schools, but you're moving homes and you have to be accustomed to their own environment, their new rules, it's really hard. Some people would talk straight crazy out their mind to me. I was sometimes servants, like Cinderella to some people. Um, and it became something so hard for me that today, when you go to college, I feel like people don't understand when you go to college and you're uh, like dealing with this as a lifestyle before, um, cause when you're in a system, you have no voice until you're 18. I felt like I was, it, I was, became free when I turned 18 cause I was able to have my voice and, and everything. So I don't think people understand that when you are dealing with all this stuff, it adds up. And I went to the bottom of emotions. I'm not able to express myself. If I and, and if I did, it resulted into crazy punishment, whether it was um, sleeping on wrestling mats in someone's in their uh, basement, clothes and trash bags, like, you know, what whatever it was, that's something that happened to me. So trauma triggers that stuff triggers me when I'm living with people that I love I'm always you know feeling like I have to walk on eggshells or I'm not good enough because I never had that stability you know and that stability with with the right people so that's where the triggers play in mind where like I just I just don't know like I, I have to learn how to deal with it and the third one would be relationships. Oh my gosh. I have a hard time with maintaining relationships. I've never really had a long-term relationships that always end up with a fight or whatever. And that is something that I have developed. Um, I moved all the time, so I never had to stay co in contact with people for a long time. So that adds up to today. Like I have trust issues because the people that are supposed to be my blood, they treated me like I was nobody. And to today, until today, I'm still dealing with that, you know, becoming the woman that I am and learning to just express myself in any kind of way. So, like, I've learned that I can't even trust my own family member, like, to be honest. And I hate to say this, but it was the truth. The people that I needed were strangers, to be honest. It was counselors. It was teachers. It was um, friends. I moved in with my friend when I was um, about to turn 18 and that friend helped me see that, you know, I was worthy of a lot. So, you know, relationships were always hard, always hard for me. And, and I believe that I've developed it because of what I went through with my mentally ill parents. Thank you. So the three is battling, battling emotions, trauma triggers, and relationships no shame in it okay so we thank you for watching this video remember to subscribe and hit the bell notification and stay tuned for our next video remember to follow tony and jess mm -hmm. podcast tony and jess podcast subscribe and hit their bell notifications remember to watch your videos tony is a college student so they have a plethora of great videos for college students on an array of different topics so Feel free to watch it. Okay, that's it. I'm rapping, I'm rambling.